Good morning everyone and welcome to worship today March the 14th the fourth Sunday in Lent and it's also Mothering Sunday. Our call to worship comes from Romans chapter 12 and I'm reading from verse 9. Love in all sincerity, loathing evil and holding fast to the good. Let love of the Christian community show itself in mutual affection. Esteem others more highly than yourself. With unflagging zeal, aglow with the Spirit, serve the Lord. Let hope keep you joyful. In trouble, stand firm. Persist in prayer. Contribute to the needs of God's people and practice hospitality. Call down blessings on your persecutors, blessings, not curses. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in agreement with one another. Do not be proud, but be ready to mix with humble people. Do not keep thinking how wise you are. Amen. Let us pray a prayer of adoration, confession, absolution, and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, as a mother loves her child, so you love us. For that great truth, we praise and thank you. We owe our very lives to you. You have watched over us from our birth tenderly nurturing us, showering us with love. When we have needed you, you have been there. You have given us strength in times of need, comfort in times of distress, encouragement in times of despair, guidance in times of uncertainty. Whatever we have faced, you have been with us. 
loving God, we praise you for the way in which you care for each one of us like a good parent. We have not always appreciated your love all too often, ignoring what you would teach us, disobeying your instructions, but you love us whoever we are, whatever we do, even though we frequently disappoint you. You are always there concerned for our welfare, for giving us. We praise you and thank you. Forgive us for the times that we take you for granted. When we do things to hurt others, particularly members of our family and friends. Forgive us for running away and wandering far from your side and forget that you are there. Thank you, God, for showing us the good and true way through your Son. Thank you for giving us and guiding our feet back even when we turn the wrong way. Thank you for your eternal love. Amen. Now we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lost Sheep One day, when many tax collectors and other outcasts came to listen to Jesus, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law started grumbling. This man welcomes outcasts and even eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. What do you do? You leave the other 99 sheep in the pasture and go looking for the one that got lost until you find it. When you find it, you are so happy that you put it on your shoulders and carry it back home. Then you call your friends and neighbours together and say to them, I am so happy I found my lost sheep. Let us celebrate. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 respectable people who do not need to repent. The Lost Coin Or suppose a woman who has 10 silver coin, coins loses one of them. What does she do? She lights a lamp, sweeps her house and looks carefully everywhere until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbours together and says to them, I am so happy I found the coin I lost. Let us celebrate. In the same way, I tell you, the angels of God rejoice over one sinner who repents. The lost son. <clears throat> Jesus went on to say, There was once a man who had two sons. The younger one said to him, Father, give me my share of the property now. So the man divided his property between his two sons. After a few days, the younger son sold his part of the property and left home with the money. He went to a country far away where he wasted his money in reckless living. He spent everything he had. Then a severe famine spread over that country and he was left without a thing. So he went to work for one of the citizens of the country who sent him out to his farm to take care of the pigs. He wished he could fill himself with the bean pods the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything to eat. At last he came to his senses and said, All my father's hired workers have more than they can eat. 
and here I am about to starve. I will get up and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired workers. So he got up and started back to his father. He was still a long way from home when his father saw him. His heart was filled with pity and he ran, threw his arms around his son and kissed him. Father, the son said, I have sinned against God and against you. I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father called his servants. Hurry, he said. Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers and shoes on his feet. Then go and get a prized calf and kill it. And let us celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. And so the feasting began. In the meantime, the older son was out in the field. On his way back, when he came close to the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, What's going on? Your brother has come back home, the servant answered. And your father has killed the prized calf because he got him back safe and sound. The elder brother was so angry that he would not go into the house. So his father came out and begged him to come in. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have worked for you like a slave. And I have never disobeyed your orders. What have you given me? Not even a goat for me to have a feast with my friends. But this son of yours wasted all your property on prostitutes. And when he comes back home, you kill the prized calf for him. My son, the father answered, you are always here with me. And everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be happy. Because your brother was dead. But now he is alive. He was lost, but now he has been found. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone, and a happy Mothering Sunday to you all. Mother's Day is going to be difficult for many people this year. Not only will there be memories of mums no longer with us, but there will be sadness that many sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters won't be able to visit or be with mums and nans as they would like to be. Zoom and video calls are all very well, but I expect most mums and nans like me just can't wait to catch up on all those hugs that we've missed over the last year. Neither will we be able to meet together in our churches and mark this special day in traditions such as distributing flowers. We can't take our mums out to dinner this year. Buying presents for mums has been difficult with so many shops closed. And I wonder if you have been able to find that special card that says just how much your mum is loved. Perhaps there are some children or young people listening this morning who have made a card for their mums. If so, let me let you into a secret. I think lots of mums are like me and prefer something made by their children and grandchildren with love rather than something bought in a shop. My grandchildren are still a little young to make cards, but instead I get a message from them in a photo card. This is the card I received from my grandson last year. Why am I showing you last year's card? Because I wonder if children realise lots of mums like me keep treasured cards in a special place, a sort of keepsake box where precious memories are stored. During lockdown, lots of us have been tidying our homes. How many of us have been stopped in our tracks, distracted by looking into our keepsake box or drawer to revisit treasures that remind us of precious moments. Moments that make us smile as we recall the joy and warmth they mean to us. Of course, a keepsake box doesn't have to be a physical thing. We all carry memories in our hearts. Joy and laughter shared with our mums as we grow up or with our children and grandchildren as each year brings new memories. Do you know, or indeed, have you ever thought what your mum has 
or had in her keepsake box about you. We know that growing up isn't always easy. We are not always nice to our mums. We don't always do the right things. And sometimes we do things that neither we nor our mums will be very proud of. We don't always get great results in exams or good school reports. We don't always do as mum asks us. We don't always keep in touch as much as we should after we leave home. Should we be worried that mum holds in her keepsake box all the bad things that we've done? No, love means forgiving. Love means being proud of what our children have achieved, not angry with what they haven't achieved. Love means counting our children and all they do as blessings, treasuring them for who they are, enjoying and celebrating their achievements, however great or small these may appear to others. If, as mums, we treasure our children in this way, if, as children and parents, we can understand forgiving love, we can surely have a glimpse of the wonder and glory of a forgiving God whose keepsake box on our lives is not full of all the wrong things we have done, whose forgiving love for us, his children, celebrates our imperfect relationship with him, a Father God who sends his Holy Spirit to enrich our lives and to shine a light in our hearts and whose uplifting love strengthens and renews us. As we celebrate the power of love this Mother's Day, we give thanks for our mothers, grandmothers, children and grandchildren. May we uphold in our lives the power of forgiving love and hold on only to that which is good and kind, valuing each other as God values us. Amen. Mothering Sunday has become not only a day to express thanks for our mothers and to celebrate motherhood, but a day to give thanks for the mothering and nurturing role of the church. We reflect on God's loving nature and the extraordinary love that God has for all his creation. Mothers have a unique relationship with their children. Having given birth to them, the strong bond of love is there from the very beginning. And mothers dedicate their lives to helping their child develop and grow, to be healthy and happy. She helps them to learn right from wrong, introducing them to the Bible and getting to know Jesus, to be aware of others' needs. A mother's love reaches beyond bad behaviour and rejection to support their child through thick and thin, and to help them find their way in the world, always ready to forgive. 
Our Gospel readings today relate the parables that Jesus told of the lost sheep and the lost coin and the lost son. Wonderful stories, each demonstrating the nurturing characteristics of a God of love in testing times. Many of us will relate to a feeling of loss, particularly in the times we're experiencing at the moment. Loss of freedom, loss of health, loss in bereavement, loss of companionship and intimacy, loss of work or financial independence, even a loss of faith and a general feeling of being lost. So the assurance and challenge we find in these parables is good to explore. The lost sheep had become separated from the flock, unaware of the shepherd's concern, and he had just wandered off, munching the juicy green grass, oblivious of danger. The lost coin had fallen off the headband of a woman who had received the coin as part of her wedding dowry. It had just rolled away and become hidden on the dark floor. Of course, neither the sheep nor the coin could return by themselves, and the shepherd and the woman were anxiously searching for them. In the parable of the lost son, we're dealing with a willful human being who had recklessly and deliberately decided to take off and take his inheritance early. Jesus expertly, expertly uses these parables to tell us more about the nature of God. From the lost sheep, we can see how God's love for every individual is so great that he actively seeks out all who have wandered from the fold. Those who have become apathetic or have slipped away from the discipline of faith, drawn away to the temptations of other things. Those who don't even know they're lost or in danger, always seeking for the unbeliever to bring them to faith. The lost coin was valuable and God knows uh, and God shows us that every part of his creation is precious to him. He deals with us gently and carefully as we would a priceless antique, not just swept away into a black sack and, along with the rubbish, but restored by his grace to be the very best that we can be. As a church, we are called to mirror the nurturing nature of God revealed to us in Jesus, sharing in his mission to save the lost. So let us return to the lost son. This young man showed arrogant disregard for his father's authority as head of the family. He initiated the division of the estate, taking his third and setting off. Like many who are rebellious and immature, he didn't spend the cash wisely as we heard in the reading. He wanted to be free, to selfishly live as he pleased with no thought of others, just as long as his good fortune lasted. Then came the severe famine and with no cash left, he was forced to get a job looking after pigs. According to Jewish law, pigs were thought to be unclean animals, so for a Jew to stoop to feeding pigs was a great humiliation. He was hungry and tired and dirty. He was at rock bottom. It's often the case, isn't it, that it takes a great tragedy or sorrow or testing times to make us re-examine what we're doing with our lives. Have we been living selfishly, disregarding our responsibilities, ignoring the path that God is calling us to take? We may turn to prayer. Will God forgive me when I've failed? Well, the lost son's thoughts began to turn to his father and the comforts he'd left behind at home. He certainly didn't expect to be welcomed home, but he was prepared to eat humble pie and thought that maybe he would get a job on his father's farm. Little did he know that his father had been waiting patiently for his son to come to his senses. Watching out for him, waiting to welcome him home in his own time, 
never shutting the door on him, ready to forgive. How much more so does God wait patiently for the wavered and the lost to come to their senses? He will give every opportunity for us to respond to his call, but he'll never force us to come to him. God's love is patient, constant, welcoming and forgiving, completely unconditional. But what about this resentful older brother, jealous of the attention his father was lavishing on this prodigal? In Jesus' story, the older brother represented the Pharisees who were angry that sinners like tax collectors and prostitutes were being welcomed by Jesus who accepted their hospitality and accepted them. The Pharisees resented that after all they'd done in studying the scriptures, religious observance and sacrifices, none of this appeared to count in their favour above the sinners that Jesus welcomed. Jealousy is a strong emotion, but God embraces all who come to him with his healing, loving arms and expects his church to do the same. So we've seen in these parables that the sheep was lost because it foolishly wandered away from the safety of the fold. The coin was lost because it accidentally came loose from the woman's headband. The son was lost because of his selfish ambition. God's great love reaches out and finds the lost no matter how or why they got into a bad situation. His offer of forgiveness is always there as he shares our joy and our pain. On this Mothering Sunday we're especially mindful of our own families. We give thanks for those who raised us, giving us physical, mental and spiritual nourishment and an education, hopefully in a loving home environment. We pray for all parents carrying through this role, particularly in these testing times and particularly those who are struggling. We ask for God to help us as a church to continue to carry out our responsibilities of as a caring and nurturing church, ready to share in God's mission, knowing that all are precious to him. Amen. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever the time is where you are, a very happy Mothering Sunday to you on what remains the strangest of times in the life of our world. Today, Mothering Sunday would have been a day when traditionally many went back to their mother church, where they were nurtured, loved and formed in the ways of God. And so even with the vaccines, we, can, we remain in strange times. It is strange because as we celebrate this Mothering Sunday, Many of us are still not able to be with those whom we love. But even with this, let us remind ourselves that there is still much to celebrate in our lives. And it's also a time to give thanks to God, to those who have mothered us and in all the ways that we can be cared for. And so let us pray. Loving God, whose son Jesus was born of a woman and nurtured in her love. And for Mary, who is a reminder of your patient and waiting love. We come before you on this Madrin Sunday, bringing before you all mothers who have loved, who have laughed and who have labored as they have cared for their children. Lord, we thank you for the love of our mothers, for their care and concern, for the joys they have shared and continue to share with us. Thank you also for the pains they have borne for us and continue to bear. 
We bring our thanks to you, O Lord, for all that mothers continue to give. And we pray for children too, and for the joys of family life. On this day, as we give thanks, we pray too for all mothers who have and continue to weep in sorrow for their children. We pray especially for those parts of your beautiful world where conflict is rife and mothers continue to wail over their children. We remember Yemen. We remember mothers in Myanmar. We remember mothers in Nigeria where there's increase in child abductions. We bring before you all those areas not in the media and unknown to us. Lord God, be with those who are grieving because they have no mother, or mothers who are grieving for a child. On this Mothering Sunday, we bring before you especially the parents of Sarah Everard and all those who have lost children in violent ways. We pray too that you will be you will be close to those who are struggling because they have no children. Be near to those who are sad because they are far, far apart or broken from those they love. Today we give thanks and pray once again for all those who care for others whether as family or friends, as doctors or nurses, as carers and, we, and all the health professionals that we are so deeply grateful for. Lord God, let your love be present in every home and help your church. The origins of our celebrations today, Mothering Sunday, and where many were nurtured and loved. Lord, help your church to have eyes to see and ears to hear the needs of the world and all who come through her doors. The song of Saint Anselm of Canterbury, a church father, is a prayer for this day. When he prayed, Jesus, like a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. In you, despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. In you, despair turns to hope through your gentleness. And in your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Jesus, in you, Warmth gives lives to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord, in your mercy, heal us. Heal a broken world. Heal a world looking for answers. In your tender love, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. And for the beauty of heaven, May your love prepare us. And finally, on this day, as we celebrate, we say our praise and honour to you, our God, a God who continues to love and care for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And may this God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, and who continues to brood as a mother over his children. Bless all mothers and all who care. This we pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Now and always. Amen. And a happy Mothering Sunday to you all once again. Amen.
So before the blessing, I'd just like to wish you all a very happy Mother's Day. I hope all the mums and the grandmas and the aunts and the sisters and the daughters in all our churches feel that they are loved for and cared for and made to feel very special on this day. And now, may the good Lord bless us and keep us, may he make his face to rest and to shine upon us and give us his peace, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let cash still ring out loud and clear, for it's that special time of year when chocolate carts and flowers are bought and mothers occupy our thoughts. So let us on this Sunday morn thank God for mothers who have borne strain, stress, and even sometimes tears of bringing up their little dears. Let's think of famous Bible mums who did their best to bring up sons and daughters to some good, some bad, and some who turned out downright mad. Young Eve, the first Bible mother, gave birth to Abel and his brother. Cain whacked his mother on the head in jealous rage. He fell down dead. Old Mrs. Noah's lovely boys had little time to play with toys. They helped their mum aboard the ark, the animals from dawn till dark. Young David was a shepherd boy, his mum delighted jump for joy. To hear that table skin and bones had killed Goliath with some stones. One mum produced a dreadful girl, her daughter's name was Jezebel. This madam was an all-out flirt with painted eyes and a short skirt. One Bible mum who suffered stress was Jonah's mum, what a mess. She sobbed when told the earth or tale of Jonah swallowed by a whale. John Baptist's mum was very sad that people claimed her boy was mad. He often dressed in camel skins and well repent ye of your sins. What thoughts went through young Mary's mind? Her Jesus well behaved and kind was like no other human child, the Son of God, so me can mind. A mother's work is never done, sometimes it's hard to be a mum, but God gives mother strength each day to keep on walking in his way.